Hi everyone, today our meditation will be on the 12 links of dependent arising. We need to understand the junctions where we can actually break the wheel. And so we'll do the meditation looking at when are our opportunities to practice rather than reinforcing our same old negative habits. So here we go, coming back to your posture and body awareness. And now reviving our motivation. In particular, we meditate on the 12 links in order to develop renunciation, the determination to be free from samsara. This will lead to liberation, nirvana. And we do this with a bodhicitta motivation in order to become fully enlightened for the benefit of all sentient beings. So the heart of our motivation remains altruistic, bodhicitta, the mind of enlightenment. But then specifically, may our renunciation be accessed and developed. May we see through the illusions of cyclic existence. May we not believe the hype of samsara. May we end uncontrolled rebirth, allowing that motivation to settle in. And then with that motivation, setting the mind on the breath in order to pacify surface distractions.
And now shifting to analysis, thinking of the 12 links in terms of their categories, afflictions, suffering, and karma, and thinking to break those habitual patterns that are negative, that cause suffering for ourselves and others. First, looking at the relationship between suffering and afflictions, disturbing emotions, negative states of mind. Currently in your life, how often does suffering of body and mind lead to almost a natural or inevitable generation of an affliction? And what is your own personal style of afflictive response? Are you more likely to fall into the category of ignorance and disassociate or ignore things, become vague and listless? Are you more likely for suffering to turn you into something very irritable and easily annoyed? Or is it more likely that when you have suffering you become needy or grasping? So just reflect on that relationship in your life so far between physical and mental suffering turning into an affliction and what type of affliction most commonly occurs. So just inviting some self-awareness without over-identification, without guilt or shame. Just look inward. And then ask yourself, what's a way to break that relationship? That very normal and natural, but not at all necessary habit of physical and mental suffering turning into a disturbing emotion. Traditionally, we might practice some lojong or mind training teachings. We might simply be happy that we're exhausting old negative karma. What would you do personally? to interrupt that pattern of suffering turning into an affliction.
And it's only normal for us to forget to use that window of opportunity. So then think about traditionally in your life, when you've generated an affliction, a disturbing emotion is there. You are irritable or angry or upset or needy or dissociative or whatever, it's happened. Think about your relationship between that and then acting from that place physically or verbally or reinforcing the pattern in your mind. How often, when you have a very strong negative state of mind, do you indulge it? Do you allow it? Do you give in to it and believe it? So just looking at your relationship between having that negative state of mind and actually acting from that place, generating negative karma. So again, being very personal and specific about when you do have that relationship between a disturbing emotion turning into a negative, destructive action. And so consider now how you might disrupt that pattern, that normal and natural pattern that you'd like to change and adjust or transform in some way. How can you prevent afflictions from turning into karma, negative karma that will then lead to suffering? The next time this occurs, what will you do? Traditionally, we might again practice Lo Zhang, thought transformation, we might remember the suffering that we don't want to experience if we indulge in these negative patterns. We might just restrain ourselves physically, verbally, distract mentally, or fill with something virtuous mentally, remembering compassion, etc. What might you do to break the link?
And of course it's normal to miss that opportunity as well. And so say you did actually do the wrong thing. You acted from anger or attachment or ignorance. You said or did something that was really destructive or harmful to yourself and others. In your own past, historically, what was your relationship between your own mistakes and them turning into suffering? You can think in terms of karma, or you could think in terms of the way that you punish your own self for your mistakes, things that might have been not been skillful. What is your relationship between having made mistakes and that having a continuous negative impact on your life, creating more suffering, body and mind? And then if you were thinking of breaking that negative pattern, that destructive habit, how do you break the link between negative karma turning into suffering? Traditionally, we might do a purification practice like using Vajrasattva or the Om Ahum meditation. We might meditate on the emptiness of inherent existence strong loving kindness, etc. But what will you do that's practical and personal to prevent your mistake from turning into future suffering?
So then see if you can just settle into a confident certainty that says, even if I don't break my negative patterns right away, there's always an opportunity to change the pattern. I can end this cycle of suffering leading to afflictions, leading to karma, leading to suffering. Whatever repetition compulsion that exists in my own life doesn't have to be endless. The more I take responsibility to end these patterns, the more empathy and compassion I'll have when observing the mistakes of others. So just sit with whatever conclusions you can come to from this practice of looking at the opportunities where we can break the wheel. And now dedicate, through the power of these thoughts, through the merit of this practice, may we quickly cut the root of samsara, grasping at inherently existent self. May we cut the root of samsara. May we see the opportunities to change our patterns and take those opportunities. And may all of this lead to full enlightenment for the benefit of all sentient beings. And you can relax your attention. I'll see you next week.